rough take, right? That sounds take. good. That sounds good, right? All yeah. right, we're gonna try a rough take. We're gonna actually do this. All right, let me. Uh, I think we might. Uh, it looks like mm-hmm. we will find out. We will find out so- shortly enough. Um, all right. Here we the go. Song what goes out to all the pregnant ladies out there. Same two chords. All right, same two chords. Just a test trying to get everything together and really just get the personality out, get it recorded, do all that has to be done. What I need is a mic stand so that I can uh, I don't have to hold the mic and I can sit at the keys. All right. So test song for the day is. um, Is it? 
composition. Yeah, first inversion. It's the first inversion of the first version. Group position, group position, your position. What's your position on abortion? Is it first inversion? Is it second inversion? Or is it group? Louder. And I play the quieter notes, but I want them to be more predominant because they're supposed to be lead tones and you can't hear them. Nope. Because I'm micing myself. Oh! Yeah, we changed it just a little bit, but it still works because it's in the same key. And if it's in the same key, you can play. chords that you can play you can play them all anyway yeah any way you like you can play them it gives you a different type of <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by So we're just going to start talking. You just decide to fade that in wherever you want. So I guess this is where it starts. This is a talking thing too, right? Yes, yes. We will talk. All right. That sounds good. There will be um, talking. All right. That's cool. I'm going to... Not much. Just slightly. Okay. All right. All right. Because I'm going to be further away most of the time anyways. All right. So today this podcast is brought to you by... Butch Howes, BJJ, and MMA. If you thought about being a fighter, okay, you dreamt about it. You Maybe you were a bully. Nine times out of ten, you were bullied, right? Some kids beating you up. You feel like, oh, I don't know what to do. But I want to be a fighter. See, there you go. But you don't know where to go. You don't know, I want to be a fighter, I'm being bullied, right? These guys, they can't even fight. They're beating me up, but they really can't fight, okay? If I could fight, then I know that they that they couldn't fight, right? So what you need to do is you need to go to Butch House, BJJ slash MMA. <laughs> yeah, B, BJJ. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Don't don't even worry about that. It's, but it's all about the MMA, okay? Man on man action. <laughs> and uh are you ready to go? Yeah, yeah. I I didn't know if you wanted to do the ads by yourself or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just jump I did, in. I didn't, I didn't whatever. feel like slandering it. No, no, no. It's all right. It's all right. They're uh, they're good guys and um and any any attention is good attention. So, um are they like totally cool like, you know, like say I were to take lessons and uh, be maliciously beating up, not beating up, but beaten up by <laughs> children. Uh, they're, they're like, I mean, they'll keep it on the DL, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, uh, if, if maybe some kids are are uh, beating you up, yes, yes. You you take some lessons from them, uh, and you will be ready to uh, to defend yourself against the kids. Um, so that's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or MMA. You can learn it all. Uh, they're located in Charleston, West Virginia. So if you are in Charleston, I don't know why, but if you are, if you are here, come down, uh, look us up. You will find Butch House BJJ MMA. All right. It, we're also brought to you by Bo Nose Music. What is Bo Nose Music? Bo Nose Music is an online website where you can go and learn music, mainly the piano, because that's what I'm playing. But uh, you can transfer any of that knowledge to your instrument. So if you play another instrument, you can learn whatever that they are teaching at Bo Knows Music and transfer it to your instrument. Guaranteed. That's my guarantee. I guarantee it. If you can't do it, you get your money back. Uh, I don't have any code words right now. But as soon as I get them, I will be sending out code words for uh, some type of discount. I'm working on that. Y'all hold on. That'll be it. Um, 
now will be an intro who knows how that would go uh welcome to the podcast welcome to the podcast welcome to the podcast all right it'll go something like that all right anyway and you'll add that in later <laughs> Let me introduce you to Bo Miles, a unique and likable guy. Everyday life, friends and family makes up the artistry. All right, so uh, today's guest is a good friend of mine, Garrett Smith. He he might go by something else. The, the rockers get different names, like you know, like Iron Arm or uh, Rip. Uh, timid Traveler. <laughs> <laughs> So you just go by Garrett. Uh, I suppose. All right. Uh, until now. Or, or, or um, actually, uh, most people call me uh, that guy. All right. Or, you know, <laughs> that, that little dude up there. I don't know. All right. So um, I know Garrett from work. We work together. I've worked several jobs. I work all over the world doing odd jobs to find people. That is my job. It's like Quantum Leap. Only, I don't leap. I just go to different jobs. So, so when is your um, when is your Discovery Channel show coming on? Uh, Odd Jobs, I think is the name of it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, I'm pushing. I'm pushing. I'm still pushing for it. Aren't you like co-hosting that with Bobby McFerrin as well? It's like Bobby and Bobby Odd Jobs. That that is something to pitch. I think I need to. I think I. I think I need to push that and try to get a show on about that. I I, I just remember like. Uh, what what you sent them like just trying to pitch the show and it was a lot of b-roll and a lot of um photoshopped clips of bobby mcfarren you know oh with me photoshopping myself in there 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 may be um <laughs> might want to get a good legal team there may be a slight chance you might be infringing copyright but yeah yeah that that <laughs> definitely uh it, especially with the singing i think once the music comes in then they they'll jump on you real quick once you start once they hear his uh his voice <laughs> oh, oh, that's all we can get for free. Okay. <laughs> well, I uh, I knew that you were a musician, but um, a friend of mine he was telling me about you, and he was like, "Man, I mean, he's uh, he's really dedicated, and he's a serious musician." Um, so I, that's the reason why I wanted to get you on the podcast. You know, I wanted to get you on the show just so the listener can get an idea into the world of of a real musician, you know, like not just somebody who's big and famous and, you know, you just got millions of dollars. So you just play the same song over and over, but no, but a real musician that you're working a job and you're doing this music and, and that's what the listener, I mean, that's what, that's what we do as real musicians. Yes, we do have some who are famous and this is the only thing that they do. And that's good. There's nothing wrong with that, but that doesn't mean that, if you're not famous, you can't do music anymore. So that's the whole purpose is like we still do music. And uh, and today we have a great musician. He's going to help us out and teach us the ways. How would you uh, describe your style of music? What do you play? Um, guitar. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's your instrument. What about your style? What style of music do you play? Uh it's hard to like narrow yourself down to one genre. It's just I just play whatever I write mostly. <laughs> I mean, um, I guess it's it's been more folky as of late, but not traditional folk, just kind of folksy like, you know, but hmm. Yeah. So folk. I like folk music and a lot of musicians, the ones that like my favorite musicians around town in Charleston, um, are like folk singers. Even if they don't describe it, I guess uh, it could just be by your area. I'm not really sure, but why don't you give us a, a taste of, uh, of 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 you know one of your your tunes? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah.
<laughs> All right. We got a taste. All right, so uh, tell us. It's kind of folksy. That's, that's like, it's not straight up traditional folk, but it, folksy is just kind of how I think. But Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely, uh, you know, I felt like, like, like I was just outside. I just felt like a cold day, uh, fall or wintry day, and you're just walking down the street, and uh, it's not it's not that much sidewalk. I just so you're you're like in the middle of the street, and you're walking. You're not hitchhiking. It's not like First Blood. Maybe it is. Maybe I see a little bit of Rambo First Blood in there, but uh, but yeah, yeah. What? Tell us the story. How did how did you even get into to music and you know how how tell us take us to the beginning of this musical adventure. Oh, the beginning. Well, um my sister started taking piano lessons. I'm, I can't remember the age, probably 7 or 8, but um you know, it's the thing with uh, I guess first first child the parents are trying to push more things on her, so you know, kind of forced her to take <laughs> lessons. However, um I guess it was an option, or maybe they never asked me. Anyways, I never, I never got that, <laughs> that, that option. So, um, a uh, buddy of mine that I live with, uh, Rick Farrell, um, he uh, started playing guitar around. I think it was like age fifteen or something like that. Well, like, in, yeah, initially, like I borrowed it, borrowed one of his guitars or something. Just, uh, it's like an old Johnson. The action was like. Yeah, probably like a uh, half inch from the <laughs> fretboard. It just, just painful to press down, <laughs> painful to keep in tune. And um, I try to try to knock it out by myself. You know, no concept of it. Just trying it by ear. But you know, I didn't have a trained ear at the time, so um, this this first attempt didn't really last long. And uh, sometime later, is uh, well, uh, Rick had got a um, he got a Squire Electric or whatever. You know, it's. It's a decent starting guitar or whatever, but he, you know, he's starting to get into it, and uh, uh, I just I borrowed uh, his sister's Johnson. That's what it was. It was just his sister's Johnson. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you can always make jokes about that. <laughs> uh, and uh, he he taught me how to read tabs, you know, which is uh, it, it's it's a good way to start because I mean it's pretty much. N- it's easy to grasp. I mean, now, you were, got, were, was y'all like forming a band or? Oh uh, no, you're just recreational use. All right, just both. <laughs> 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 yes, we uh, guitar for recreation. Yeah, right. <laughs> recreational uses, but you know, it's tablature. It's pretty. It's pretty straightforward. You got six lines. Each line represents a string. Just think of it. Uh, the the one on the bottom would be your lowest one. So that would be the one closest to you whenever you're holding it upright. You know. And, you know, uh, the numbers represents the frets. And, I mean, pretty straightforward. And, you know, once I got a hold of it, you know, I could, I noticed, like, I was making the correct sounds, and it just kind of took off from there. And I got an electric, like, got my own, my first guitar probably within the month. And uh, just started playing a lot like crazy. Just uh, uh, What were your... What uh, what were your earlier influences? You know, like what type of music were you listening to? Oh, okay. Well, this I uh, it was I was sixteen whenever I got that guitar. Closer to seventeen, so um, <laughs> I remember like whenever I was starting to play, I was like uh, the one thing I was like, I just I just really want to learn Santa Maria by Sublime. <laughs> did you? Yeah, I did. I did. All right, go ahead, play it. Uh, you copyright. still remember that stuff? Copyright. You still remember your first yeah, songs? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I yeah, mean, yeah, let's hear it. But it was, it was funny because um, first time, like I, I, I um, spent a year like just learning on my own, and then I started taking lessons, and um, like it was kind of funny. Single notes were easier, but chords were harder. And you usually think like you know leads would be, you know, harder than the chords, but. Uh, that song uh, it starts out, you know, like with uh, arpeggiation of chords, you know, just uh, but like 
you know, normal person would hold down the chords and play each note, I would fret each individual note originally. As you can imagine, that was required a lot of moving and contortion <laughs> if you're going to do it that way, especially when, you know, I probably wasn't really big into using my pinky at the time because that's, you know, kind of the last one you break in because, you know, calluses. Well, yeah, that. breaking in that pinky. Yeah, yeah. Not like, uh, that, um, I feel kind of embarrassed. Some said, no, 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 uh, no offense to people. It still listens to that. But I mean, like at the time, you know, my, my, uh, the style I listened, the music I listened to back then, like it differed, but I was into like a lot of system of a down, disturbed, <laughs> much of that radio rock. Um, so were you just listening to that stuff and, and just learning it? Yeah. Lucky for me, most of it, you know, wasn't, wasn't too hard. A lot of it wasn't, but, um, yeah, I just went my own for a year, and then I started taking lessons with uh, Josh Cannon at uh, Music Mania, which was in uh, Canal City Mall. Whenever you know it was before it was an, a strip mall, like it was actually yeah, just I remember, a mall. I remember when it was like that. Yeah, and uh, took lessons up until like whenever I left for college, like a year and a half later, two years later, and I feel like. Uh, Increase my ability by like eighty <laughs> percent. Oh, taking lessons with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Seriously, he really stepped you, threw you up there. Huh? You was ready. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I did. You join a band during the lessons with him, or after, or yeah, it was it was after the fact. You know, I was just taking it to get better. I just really enjoyed playing, and you know, I was able to play more and more difficult things. It just it started. Uh, he just he, he really rooted like G major <laughs> in my mind, but that's because that was the first one he started off with. <laughs> yeah, learning scales and modes, which modes I'm still trying to fully grasp it to this day. Yeah, and yeah, it's a that. process, man. You gotta keep you gotta keep at it. You know, you know, like you never a master, but you are proficient. You gotta look at it like a language. Like we're not masters of English. But we're proficient. We can have a conversation. Uh, you maybe you are a master, <laughs> master of conversation, <laughs> master of conversation, right? That's the real thing. Just having a, that conversation. So, what what was your first band, or you know, how did that come about? Well, it was. Uh, I originally went to college at uh, W, but there was uh, a room rooming situation. I was uh, charged for. Like a uh, room there because uh, the view, I guess the thing they have with freshmen. Um, oh, you have to have a room? You have to have a room unless you live within 50 miles. And uh, I had orientation in like June and, you know, I was living in a house. Like I was within the, sp within the space and they okayed it. And they didn't bother to contact me to like the after the first full day of classes. Like, yeah, we, we've revoked your commuter status. We're going to put you on uh, a <laughs> bill for a room and a meal plan. And I spent most of that semester trying to get them to take it away because I never even went to said room. <laughs> oh. uh, but, yeah, after after that, I ended up uh, – because I was originally in engineering. So, you know, after that, it was too much uh, to pay for, you know, a room that I wasn't even using. So moved back home and I went to tech and um, – I don't think it was yet that year. It was. It was going into the, f the fall of that year, two thousand eight. It's just uh, me, my buddy Rick, uh, my friend Sam, and Rick's younger brother Walter, just started playing, in uh, Rick's garage. Yo, that was the band. Did you, what was your name? <laughs> what was the band name? Oh, it, he who shall not be named. Uh, <laughs> Was it that bad? Was it like a cock hole door? Oh, the name wasn't that bad. I'm pretty sure I'm remembering the band worse than it actually was. But, I mean, it was the first one. I mean, you like know. Like gerbil hair. Or... I mean, we've all done some things, you know. We, you know, It was fun, but I mean, we've all done some things we can't be 100% proud of. <laughs> Not that it was bad, but it was a learning experience. Yeah. Uh, man, one thing that I noticed, um, like the, the first song that you did, you know, and just – if the listeners out there, maybe they're getting into rock, you know, I, I want to kind of talk about progressions. What are some some of the common progressions that you might find either in folk or uh, alternative or rock or who knows the different 
classifications for all of it, but what are like some some of the basic progressions that you might learn, you know, when you're in the beginning starting off? Um, well, if I'm going to start talking about progression, we're going to kind of bridge off into theory. In well, a sense. I mean, you but know, I do have a I do have a, a pretty good example. Like uh, there's this video on YouTube. Uh, was it Axis of Fun? I think is who does it, but it's uh, the four chord progression or it's it's I think they in four minutes they mash together 40 pop songs because it's all based on the same chord progression. Keep in mind, you know, the songs may vary in tempo and key, but they, you know, transposed it all to the same key, which I think they did it in E. All but, right. but that, um, that progression was, uh, I think it was one, five, six, four, one, one, um, five, yeah. You said six. Six. My and, and then, then four and then one. All right. Four. Uh, and then back to the one. So one, five, six. Yeah, yeah. Four. Yeah, yeah. Like they, they did 40 songs like that. I can't remember. Oh, man. See, because this You uh, can think it's like just keep going. Just, just keep going. I'm trying to remember like all of them that they did, but Just off of those four chords, I'm trying to think like. Oh, I got. All right, keep playing. Loop it. Let me see. Cause there's a song, I can hear it. Like I'm pretty sure that that song is in C, but I mean same principle. Yeah, yeah, it's, same, the it's the same. same it's the same, same progression, progression because you know <laughs> within the key. Man, it's a song. I want to say if but I can't think. It's a whole bunch of, them, of songs man. that. Uh, I think it was, yeah, Axis of Fun or something. I think that's what it was. All right, just so, four chord song or so four we chord got, pop uh, song. I think. So that video. so that progression we got the one, yeah. five Not your dominant, and then Subdominant. six. And then relative minor. Oh, I did it backwards. It was dominant. Oh, relative well, minor, here, let's subdominant. Uh, yeah. blah, blah, blah. You got that play okay. So we got one, five, yeah, dominant. Uh, six, right? Yeah. And then four, subdominant. And then we go to the to the one, right? So if you don't know um, what we're talking about, like when we say one, uh, six, four, and all of that, definitely go to uh, Bo Knows Music. Uh, we have a lesson where we discuss that and it's a free lesson. So you don't have to worry about paying anything. You can also go to YouTube because they have a bunch of uh, tutorials there. Uh, I go, I use YouTube a lot. Like even if I'm learning a song, let's say I'm trying to learn something for a wedding. I'll listen to the song. And then after I learn it and I feel like, okay, I got it. I'll listen and check out two tutorials just to see what they're doing. Like I was playing, uh, what song was it? It was something. I can't even think. Uh, I got it. I won't complain. So a pastor at, at the church, he uh, he wanted me to play that song. And so I listened to it. 
which it was on an organ and it was very advanced like the arrangement was ultra advanced no progression uh, you was not hearing no progression out of this uh so so i had to go to a tutorial and and uh the first tutorial it started with um with this diminished and then it went to to this uh minor chord but the second one it started with that same diminish but they did like a um they did this which is uh, more like a dominant chord so and it was just two different ways you know so i definitely encourage all the listeners like if you want to learn something definitely check out uh other means you know like after you learn it uh cross check it because uh, you'd be surprised how other people play it uh some of this i like nirvana just coming up like uh like that's that's what i like and that and uh what is that grunge is that the style yeah grunge um yeah like that them and rem i think pretty much pioneered that yeah genre. like i like i like i like them and i like uh bush and I like deftones like when i was young you know like that's the that's the stuff so like when i think of rock and you know i'm not even sure if it's if it if it's even called rock you know because it's so many different genres and so many classifications for all of that stuff these days you know <laughs> i just it's just it's i just call it all yeah i just call it all rock everybody's trying to find their own special way to make it their own you know just, just yeah own it. did you uh did you learn any any grunge through the years it's not that is I, I know i learned a couple of nirvana songs back in the day oh uh, like, uh, like i mean how you do know. you separate go ahead <laughs> That's pretty. That's four chords, and the the verse is like. Is it just <laughs> one chord holding? What? Uh, it's just yeah. It's just two notes. Oh, what key? CF. What key are you in? Uh, I want to say F, but I don't think that's quite right. Hold on. <laughs> Definitely not. It's <laughs> <laughs> not, not F. <laughs> it's either gonna be like G E flat, or G. G flat, A flat. Oh, all right. Uh oh. No, no, no. A flat. Um, G flat. D flat. Oh, D flat. So what's the first chord? That was an F natural. All right, so F. Uh, that doesn't sound like that doesn't sound happy like that. Now, how how are those chords voiced? Like um. Oh, well, this is like, this is pretty common around, you know, most rock. I mean, this, it's just uh, a power chord, which uh, really uh, only consists of two notes. All right. Because it's it's just the root and then the fifth and then another octave. So it's. All right. So we got. And then what's the next one? So we got the so, F. Yes. Yeah, the B flat. Oh. G flat. D flat. Guitar is an octave lower than it's written on sheet music. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. Yeah. So it would yeah, be written up here, but it's actually yeah, it's actually where you were playing. All right, so goes so there. when you read it, you're gonna you're, you're gonna, gonna be, see the notes up here. Yeah. So do you know to to take it down here? Well, no, I'm just saying guitar is naturally that low. Okay. You read it from there, but I mean it's technically, you know, an octave higher. Whenever you do, that's why whenever you do chord solos, you're supposed to play the melody an octave higher because on any other instrument it will be an octave higher oh so so like this is stuff that you already know like when you're going in to um when you're going in to play it or going in to read it you know like okay i'm gonna read it on the staff right or an octave higher that's what you would do if you're you know chord soloing or yeah if you want to play in unison with the other i'm personally not the best at sight reading i'm no. trying to get better but <laughs> yeah 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 like i mean hey man it's just the same like like that's how i feel even with me um even though like my 
usually I just read the um the chords. So I would just read I guess like you would see the tabs or something if we're talking about like guitar music. Uh, like, cause I'm not really too familiar how it would look, um, other than the tablature, but, uh, I know that you'll just see like the chord and let's say it's a G minor, you know, so I, I have a couple G minor chords, so I'll play whatever one. Well, I mean, you could, you can go through it two ways. I mean, you, ha you have a lead sheet, which will have like, uh, the melody written on the treble clef and then you'll have the chords written above it. So, you know, okay. or on tablature, they can. They could have it written out there, like you said, G minor. They could it'd be like from uh, top to bottom. It'd just be three five five three 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 three. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, and that's cool. So, uh, what? Go ahead. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's pretty cool. Like, uh, and even even with that, like, cause I really didn't know, um, cause the music sounds so full. Like, it sounds full, and me just coming from from like a R&B type of gospel background like I'm I'm automatically going to play uh a third I'm going to put a third in there I might play a seventh but uh you know it's crazy to just looking at it from your perspective um with that song anyway I'm quite sure well it, it gets more intense yeah that that's, that's that's just power chords that's just like with most things especially punk like punk is just driven off of uh, fast songs, just power chords, just, you know. <laughs> you know, it's just like jamming it hard. Um, oh, so all of that is power chords? Yeah, yeah. And then you have the bar chord, which is, you know, you add in the thirds usually or the seventh, you know. So who, uh, when did you start to hear more like the thirds, you know, like when was that, like when did that really pick up in the music where you start hearing thirds and sevenths and. Well, it just, it just depends on the song, but I mean like with grunge and that, the example I gave, it was mostly power chords. I mean, all right. So like they've been around. All right. So like, <laughs> like with grunge is going to be most mainly power chords and just the different type of, uh, you said like what, three or four chords just repeating. Well, not not in every song, but I mean, you know. Usually. Yeah, I mean, mostly. Usually. I mean, a lot yeah, of Yeah, because you might are... get like a like a verse, whatever. You might get a, a variation of chords there and get a, another variation of chords for your hook. Yeah. And then if it has a bridge, uh, will like that music, will it follow that? Like uh, like verse, hook, bridge, or like, you know, what's the, what's the structure of most, you know, your main rock songs i mean like i said we all know that it's so vast that it's hard it, to just it classify it as rock but it really depends on the, the artist or the band really but i mean you know you think most songs would uh if they have an intro well you got an intro and then it'd just be like verse chorus verse chorus maybe a bridge somewhere or a solo or a third part or maybe just be straightforward oh uh, now with your music um, do you write a lot? Do you write your own music a lot, or do you just do music in your band, or how? You know, how does that come about? Like, okay, what are we gonna do? Well, I uh, my current band I just joined like a month and a half ago, not that long, so I'm still I'm more or less transitioning into uh, the material they already have written, mm -hmm. and I'm learning it, and I'm trying to um, add some parts to it. There's also another, like I'm the third guitarist. <laughs> as it turns out, for the time being. Um, so I'm trying to, like, a lot of times I don't know where the other guy has leads, and I don't think it's, a lot of things aren't very set in, so I usually end up improv quite a bit oh. <laughs> anytime I play with him. So I know the basic structure. Like, I'll know, I'll know, you know, the chord progressions in the whole song, so, you know, I know when to jump in and out basically, or if I have to jump out, I don't know where we are, or try to at least. <laughs> so do you learn, like, uh, you know, first day of practice with a new band, right? Do they just say, like, all right, we're just going to play our stuff, and uh, you just listen and jump in? Well, they're like, I'm, I'm, we're going to teach you this song. And I mean, you know, if, if, if I wanted to write or play something, I mean, they wouldn't. You know, they're very encouraging. I mean, they wouldn't be like, no, <laughs> that's not there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, see, I was in a, I was in like a jazz band, um, and I was 
and like a local jazz band and then a college the college jazz band and so the the college jazz band it was very organized you had uh the band director he passed out the music we had the lead sheets and we went about so that was pretty much the college band but the local jazz band it was like okay we're just gonna play like we're gonna play we're gonna play a song um and then and you jump in so they just they might call a tune like hey we're gonna do autumn leaves uh, that sounds a little crackly hmm. <laughs> right and they they would just play <coughs> I wonder they would just play and you know there was no music hand like they didn't pass out any music they didn't they didn't even ask to say like hey <laughs> you know this when they just start playing and if you knew it you jumped in and if you didn't uh just kind of stand there you know neck for next time like look yeah. <laughs> you want to you want to learn that one so uh but you know in your in your case in your genre you know how they just uh they just teach you the stuff that they say like hey here's the chords or how they do it yeah for the most part you know and uh with this band they have a lot of different time signatures a bunch of different all right with one of your own like tunes that. let's say we just formed a band uh me you and our listeners and we all like how teach us you know kind of take us through a time you know just kind of take us through a song how would you you know how does it go with uh, one that just choose a song that you want and, uh, you know, you just start giving out parts or whatever, uh, you know, however you would do it uh, with our listeners. Just give them a drummer, I guess, some guitar parts. It was, you know, like you said, you're in a band now with three guitars. So if you want to, you know, give out two other parts or whatever, like, you know, just kind of walk us through that so that the listener can get an idea of like, all right, this is. This is how band. This is how real band rehearsal goes. We, of course, we won't have all those instruments, but you know, just hand us out the parts or whatever. Well, um, we're working on uh, some newer stuff, and uh, uh, John, this, uh, John Poole, he's uh, pretty much the front man. In the whole thing, like he came out with this this one song. Uh, I think it's called "The World" or whatever. But uh, him and the bass player, they. Um, there, there's one practice it was just them and they came up with some parts of this and you know so they brought it brought it to everybody we learned it and we started to build from that you know and so everybody tries to get the general gist of it and then they'll kind of add their own bit to it you know their own flair to it with you know each part you know because we, we have a trombone player as well so you know you may end up playing like just the the main notes of the chords mm-hmm. until you know he gets the the gist of it and then he'll add his own little leads in so do they just per- play it's pretty much like what I, you know i would do i just play the song until i'm familiar with it until i've heard it enough that i can try to figure out what what sounds good where so do they do they tell you the chords do they yeah yeah all right so uh just pick a song it doesn't have to be one of y'all songs that you're working on in this band but whatever song you want to kind of give us that illusion you know just so we can well, get a, an idea yeah well, well last practice um i also brought up this song i wrote like two years ago i've right. just been kind of sitting on haven't had anything to do with it so um you know i showed that to them i mean it's it's pretty much just um somewhat skeletal it's just like you know it's mostly like one one guitar like one track through it i mean i have some parts that have harmonies mm-hmm so it'll be you know more full, but it's uh, like I actually have drums written for it as well, but I couldn't remember them on the top of my head. Like I ended up sending them that later, but uh, I myself can't play drums. I don't possess that rhythm. I can I can write them down, yeah. but I just I'd be like, hey, show me. No, no, I really can't. <laughs> <laughs> so do you tell them like, look, it's uh, it's kind of like let's say we just had a drummer here. Uh, would you just start playing? So that he can understand, like as soon as he hears Here's the what you're beat. playing, he knows, like okay, it's one of those type of songs. Yeah, basically go with it. I mean, um, there was 
in in one progression like that, I knew there's there's gonna be this stop, and I told him like there's gonna be this stop, like you can roll into it, but I mean like you know everybody's gonna stop, like it goes. Uh, Like on that D. Like I tell him that, and uh, it was like basically, you know, just kind of a beat. You know? Yeah. And he just picks up on it and goes with it because, you know, he's better at it than I am. Yeah. So. <laughs> So like uh, it just starts with a general idea. And all right, they, so like they even take with, it and expand it. Like Eve, so with that, you know, um, do you tell like if I was the other guitarist, do you tell me like this is the chords or these are the notes or like how do you or you just well I know it just because you know I like I've been playing for a while so well, is for, that how it goes or well for now I mean there are some parts where there's harmony so it's like yeah this is. You know, I'll be playing this. I need somebody to play this, you know. Yeah. Behind me. But for the most most part of it right now, it's just uh it's in its what skeletal states. So it's just mostly chords, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I mean, because like just like I you know, I've never been in a in like a rock band. So like I don't know how those practices goes and this is a this is a good look into into how one might you know go about that um like with the like if this was um like my thing all right trying to figure out why it's hmm i don't think and it just happened like i'm not really sure uh Wiggle the cable, maybe. Oh, you think it's... That's it. That's a brand new cable. That's... All right. right. <laughs> there we go. That's a lot better, right? So, yeah. uh, let's say, you know, if I'm uh, doing a song, I would say, it just depends on who I'm dealing with. Like, if you know numbers, I'll call out numbers. If you don't, then I'll just tell you the chord itself. Um, uh, so... So yeah, so you know, it just depends on the person, but you know, we've set up the groove. Let's say it's uh in G. So uh I would say, you know, we're gonna start on the six. Um so yeah, we'll start on the one and then we'll go to the six or something. And then two and five, and then we'll go back to the one, right? Uh usually with the drummers, I, I just like to play I just like to play the song and just have them just catch it, you know, like catch it. So like, even if I was, so I, I would just, to you know set up the tempo now if it's any type of breaks or any type of like special hits then i let them know like you were saying uh with yours but for the most part you know uh the musicians i guess when, when you're in any band you are hoping that the that the musicians in the band are serious and dedicated enough to kind of know a little bit to know the style and know what they're doing so that you don't have to just hold hands throughout the whole practice. So uh it's it's always a plus if they just show up for a practice. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so, uh, yes, he's here. Yeah, I can only imagine cuz you're going to have some uh a lot of divas. Now, what's up with the live? Just how 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 is the live scene? Um, you know, like if you want to play, like you got your band, y'all, you got your band. So what's the next step, you know, like do y'all have an idea like okay, eventually in a couple months or whatever, we're going to start playing at X, Y, Z and then start. Do you talk about those things or what? Well, where I've already, like I joined this band, they've already got, you know, some gigs lined up, you know, it's just kind of, it's already a little bit moving around. Like right now, what we're looking to do is uh, trying to uh, go in like the tri, tri-state area or just try to branch out a little bit because mm -hmm. we've been playing around town quite a bit. Oh, and already? 
Yeah, well, you know, every now and again. But you were saying, like, what is the scene? And around here, um, there isn't so much of a music scene. If, um, like, what I'm getting at is, like, when I first started out, like, playing in bands, I was, you know, like, 18, 19, right? And obviously, you couldn't play any bar shows. <laughs> so there's, there's really uh, not much for a all ages venue oh. around here. We used to play shows at the LaBelle. We you know, you could rent out that place I think for like 4 hours for like 200 bucks. And then uh they required like 50 bucks down payment and they started rec- asking for it all up front once somebody just you know shorted them. <laughs> and then uh they ran into other troubles. And then so they just they quit they quit doing it and we had other places that had it and it'd just be um a couple of uh bad eggs kinda ruined it for everybody. I mean, just bringing whatever substances to that place. And it just <laughs> yeah, ruins ruins the fun for everybody else. <laughs> Cause I mean they a lot of people just want to come see me, people play music and it's uh kinda troubling, you know, if you're under twenty one because there's not a whole lot of places you can play. Now uh my buddy John, I think it was like in June, he started. He got a Kickstarter and he raised some money, oh. and he has his own, um, like through uh, his church, they let him use uh, this space for like all ages uh, events. Uh, he calls it the Cartriff, and I think right now, I mean, the way it's been, he's has a show like every Friday, I believe, like every Friday. He's got one. He's starting to get bands from out of state come in, you know. Wow. Play as well, so it's he's start he's trying to get that moving again. Uh, Sam's, uh, which is you know a bar, but I mean they yeah, have. Yeah, I've been, I played there. But yeah, they they um they're starting they're trying uh to do all ages events and they're trying to get uh what they do is they have uh two floors right and they have two separate bars but what they do is they close down the bar and they just have it straight upstairs like the kids just go straight upstairs you know no nobody takes anything up there and they're trying that out. Just trying to get more, more demand for all ages events. Um, other than that, I mean, there, there's, there's like a lot of, uh, a lot of great talent, you know, around the city. I mean, uh, you know, bar shows. I mean, there's plenty of those, plenty of places to play. I was just talking like all ages. There's not that much, but <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's a lot of places, but there's not a lot of places. So. It, it, you know, it depends. I mean, if you're you're aspiring, you really want to play, and it's kind of like, uh, you may be able to play this coffee shop. That's about it. Maybe you know. Yeah, and just play a few of those. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, you know, just getting the music out. I guess because what you're gonna sell it to. Uh, Maybe your friends and family first, and maybe a few a few strangers here and there, but uh, you know, really, and be, so that you can build that fan base, and then they can come. You know, you bring in, hey, I'm gonna be playing at Sam's tonight. Uh, so I mean, that's a challenging aspect for all. Like even no matter what style, I think, um, just that. Like even if it's uh, R and B or hip hop or gospel or whatever, I think whatever genre finding that place to play you know and it's hard to tell if it's because of like the internet and tv and you know it's like because uh the further in the past you go i think the more important live music becomes um so i'm not really sure if any of our new technology is you know aiding to the fact that it's becoming harder and harder for live musicians so who knows (laughs) All right. Well, that is it. I believe I don't know how much time we did here. Uh, maybe the next time I will keep a timer. <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> yeah. We, we this is uh, this has been three hours. Like who knows? <laughs> who knows how long this has been? But uh, but it's definitely uh, been fun. I'm glad uh, to uh, to have you on the podcast, and I would like to do this again with you uh, and later on in the future. Um, so hopefully we get set up a lot quicker. <laughs> that was, yeah, yeah. That was that was a little that was a little rough. But hey, you know that's that's just learning. Like you got to go through those type of things. Uh, I'm quite sure that next time we'll go we a lot be- faster. We better. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, again, remember our sponsors. 
We have Butch House, BJJ, and MMA for all your jujitsu needs. Uh, that rhymes. <laughs> yeah, I'm quite sure he thought about that. He was like, "Man, what what can I call?" Like, why don't you just make a jingle for it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what is missing. It needs a jingle. BJJ for MMA. <laughs> JJ, sorry. <laughs> I already defamed it. Oh no. <laughs> so yeah. Uh he he is a black belt, certified black belt under uh Marsalo. I'm on, I want to say Garcia, but it's not Garcia. Monantero. Brazilian black belt who studied with uh De La Riva himself. If you are in the jiu-jitsu, you know what that means. So uh remember him. Definitely check that out. And we also have Bono's music. If you, uh, if this was interesting to you and you feel like, hey, you know, some of that stuff you were talking about musically, I wish that I knew it. Head on over to Bono's music and get your lessons. You got free lessons there. So, and that's it for the podcast. Thank you all. And we will catch you at a later time, Jobin. your cable in. Where are we? Are we on out? Are we on out two chords? What chords you want, man? Hey, whatever. I, I don't know that chord. <laughs> <laughs> the whatever. The whatever major seventh. <laughs> Where you want? Where you? Where you trying to play at? Where? Where home you trying to visit? <laughs> what? What key? <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh. What's your favorite? What's your favorite? You gotta have a favorite. I, I really, really like G and A. All right. Um, yeah. G and A. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Uh, when it comes to guitar, I'd like to play in the sharp keys. When it comes to um, piano, I'd rather play in the flat keys. <laughs> yeah, and that's. I think that's usually how it goes. <laughs> I think guitar is just built better for like E, A, G, and D. But, I mean, like. Well, I mean, the only difference is, is if you if you count the open notes. I mean, other than that, I mean, everything moves. Like, I was like, okay, watch. I'm gonna play you uh, from this position, a G major scale. All right. All right. I'm gonna play you A major. All I did was move it up two frets. All right. How about there? Uh, there are grids. There are grids. Like if I wanted to. Um, oh, like A flat. A flat? Yeah. All right. Uh, you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's just, it's just, it's the same. So it's the same. It's the same movement. Like your hands are moving the same way. Yeah, I mean, it's just grids. Yeah. Oh, okay. So once you know the pattern, or once you know like how you move throughout the grids. You can now play in any key. I mean, if, even if you don't fully know the grids, I mean, if you roughly know uh, the chords, you can arpeggiate and kind of branch out from that. Like, like you said, you said A flat. I'm not really that well versed in A flat, but I know it would be um, be F minor, right? Yeah. Be the relative minor. Yep. So you know, I can, I can find F minor, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, right there. You can... you can always go. Oh. That's always that's always such a cop out. I feel like with um, most. Um, <laughs> Just look at me and be like, hmm. Uh, so no, good. no, man. I'm just so, go no, and no, let no, it no, out. No. Let, him, no, no. let him know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just like um, 
mainstream rock is like you, you hear this certain uh, scale in most songs, and that scale, ladies and gentlemen, and Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> and Peter, the cat, uh, is pentatonic minor. <laughs> I mean, all Freebird is nothing more than G minor pentatonic. It's hard with the with the, the acoustic, but <laughs> but I mean it's all in that group. All right, so pen- it's all in that grid. So minor pentatonic is what? What is that? So just give me a. It's a five get, tone. So pentatone. Okay, so so give me what, what, what which which minor do you want? Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, I'll give you. I'll give you the same one I did, but an octave lower. But so yeah. So right here's your root. But um, uh, yeah. yeah. So is that G minor? Doing the G minor pentatonic. All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Doesn't sound. Because you said it's five yeah. five notes. Yeah. Is it that? Dun, 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 dun. Or are you, are you dropping? There you go. Oh, so you need that in there. No. I like that anyway. That's yeah. a blues tone. That's yeah. Hexatonic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're throwing that blues tone in there, but, but the basic... Of it, the basic five is yeah. All right, so they just play it to death. He said. <laughs> basically, he said. Basically, I mean that's. We had we played the haunted barn last Saturday, and um, uh, it might not have been the uh, the most well organized <laughs> game we ever played, but it was still fun. Um, ended up sprinkling though, so that was a little bit different. Oh, because you said it was a barn. Well, it's they, they call it the haunted barn, but it's actually like on the east side. Oh, okay, on the east so end of no... Charleston. Yeah, yeah, we were like. Technically playing on the street. I don't. I can't remember what street it was, but I think it was like two over from uh, Washington. Oh, uh, was it near like the empty glass or something? It's yeah. It's it's you know it's it's uh, two streets over from Washington, all one right. street down from Thompson, I believe. Oh, all right. In in that in that in that block. Okay. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, it started to sprinkle. They had a little stage. They had like a little tent set on it, and you know the drummer got underneath that. And he, <laughs> oh, so the drummer but there was wasn't safe. there wasn't much room for us. So I just set like my I set my amp head up there because it's tube. I'm like I'm not chanting this at all. <laughs> and uh, for future reference, now you know I'll have a I'll have a trash bag to drape over my amp. But oh, my pedal did it get board, soaked? Oh, uh, it did, it just drizzled. If it would have rained any harder, we would have stopped. But I mean, oh. it was still it was still annoying. My pedal board got like covered a little bit but my pedal board's like heavy duty so uh, it, it was like a music video i mean y'all was out yeah. there in the drizzle yeah we were the drizzle <laughs> but it's, it's funny like after the first song like i had my yeah. i had my hoodie on you just hear because i'm just like trying to wind <laughs> down the fretboard i didn't turn down the volume at all so you yeah. hear that like over distortion <laughs> man he really likes that sound everybody's like Everybody's kind of like looking around the PA, like, "Oh, what happened? What happened?" I'm like, "I'm like, dude, I'm not playing with this wet fretboard, man. Yeah. I need to, I need to change those strings still because I feel like you know they're probably half rusted. They, they're not, but I feel like they are. Psychosomatically, I won't be able to play them the same now. But <laughs> uh, man, I should have brought my guitar. You could have kind of showed me some stuff. I have plenty. 
Uh, I can show you some stuff. Yeah, see? I'm yeah, going to I'm gonna have to work with that. I'm going to have to. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you this one. Oh, jeez. Scheiße. <laughs> I, 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 can, I can play that one because that one's got a little bit more difficult. It's got a fatter neck. I'll let you play this one. The action's really low on it. Yeah, see, because I got, I got to learn my beat. I guess I got, I don't know what I have to learn. I mean, I know that I got to learn my chords, right? Because, I mean, I have a, a I have a, a, some type of understanding of, of chord sequencing. But I just need to learn them, I guess, on the guitar so that I can play songs, you know? What was the progression to that? I uh, I don't know. I was I went between like G to D to G to C to G to something. I, I, oh, I'm just right. jamming, man. Yeah, yeah you said, uh, so we're talking about. Yes, a really, a really gassy, <laughs> really audible too. <laughs> I have a mic. I have a mic on my anus, so <laughs> when I let them out, yeah. everyone can hear. Yeah, is that is that the field you're recording from? <laughs> yeah, that's why. Yeah, um, we're talking about like different type of like uh, just different type of chord forms. Of course, you know we talked about the the root fifth and then the major, like the bar chord, mm-hmm. which you know it's it's all about it's a lot of things with guitar. I mean, it's all movable, like chord form especially. It's like when you do bar chords, it's all about shape. Like you got your uh, root, your fifth, your octave, and then the third here, and then these are just octaves of the other ones. But this is okay. This is your major chord, right? See what I'm doing there? All right, I'm gonna make this minor. Just flat the third. Okay, I'm gonna go back to major. Now I'm gonna make this uh, a major seven. So I'm gonna flat that octave. See right there. That's it's all about moving the shape. Okay, we'll go back to our major. All right. I'm gonna make this dominant, so I'm gonna flat the seventh a whole step. All right. Yeah, see, all right. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna make it minor again. Okay, now I'm gonna flat the seventh a whole step. And there's right. your minor seventh. One and diminished. You know, flat fifth. Yeah. There are other forms as well. I mean, like you can play. Um, that's a major seventh of uh, I think I think that's F major seven. There's just there's different inversions, different. Oh, uh, so like with that first way, like that, where there, there's doing a, a G. This, I think this is uh yeah this is this is another form of G major seventh. I mean there's just different inversions of way you can do it, but I mean just in in form of bar chords, you know just you just shape it. That's with uh the E root. Okay. Now with A, it's a little bit different. So here is, uh, I'm just saying A string root. Uh, we'll do it for C this time. You got your root, your fifth, your octave, and then your third. No, is that the same? It feels the same as the previous one? It, it's, yeah, with the, well, if I wanted to play C with the E root, C, oh. notice the shape is different, how I'm okay. holding my hand. Yeah. But this one is like yeah. that. Okay, if I want to make it minor, it's the same shape as major on the mm-hmm. above string. Now the difference is because um, this is a different interval than the rest of the string. This is a fifth. From here to there, E to B is a fifth. All right. So that first and everything shape. else is going in fourths. So let's right. say you learned that first shape um, when you were doing all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was the G when you did your. Oh, this, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you was doing that, right? So uh, w- if you take that same shape and move it, like, can you hold that same oh, shape? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's like, okay, this is G major. I want to play, 
you know, I want to play C major. Oh my I want to play A major. I want to play E major. I want to play right. F sharp major. It's just, you just move it. That's all it is. C, E, D, F, F sharp, A, B. It's just move the shape. All right. You do it for minor. You got B minor, D minor, G minor, you know? So you have to learn all the shapes. Minor seventh. all it is it's just shapes and you just move it you just oh. it, all you really need to know is the notes for these two strings for the most part because these are the roots all right if you know that then you just know where to move the shape to okay so you know you got your major your minor your minor seventh your major seventh and your dominant seventh that's just the, the, the more basic ones you know diminished just if you if you know so how many shapes are there do you know? Well, you, you, you can go even more expansive than that. Probably, you know, further than I know, you could be like, you know, add nines, add thirteens, you know. But, I mean, they're all based on shapes, and you can just move them. Yeah. Basically. So 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 do they – is that the way that they teach? Like, when you're learning the guitar, do they teach you shapes? Like, look. Yeah, here's... like, you, have you ever seen, like, chord diagrams? Uh, no, I never really did any type of – I got all I, – I collaged – well, I got all of it together, put together. Like, oh, break open that book, man. Like, and you'll find chord diagrams in there. You should. If not, <laughs> in, that, if not in that one, definitely in the Hal Leonard one. It should be opposite there. Like, let me see if I can I'll show you what they what, what they look like. The Hal Leonard one definitely has some. This one's a little bit different. I'm trying to get back into sight reading. No, Hal, no. Leonard, Hal Leonard is so fucking heavy on chords, man. Like, sight reading chords. This one has, like, the... Well, there's a couple of different ones. This isn't like the one I was thinking of because this has got like more of a fretboard, mm -hmm. but that's the ge same general concept of it. That one's showing notes though. Yeah. Don't even... Yeah, that like so here. Uh, E flat major was that as far as I made it last time I threw that. I don't know. It's that uh. back. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me see. I've, I've made it through the first book like three times, but I always get stopped like halfway through the second one. I have all three, and then I just – and then like enough time passes that I have to start over again. Where the hell are you? Because I know – I know there are – okay, well, yeah, they're, they're on the top there. All right. Like, see, chord forms. Yeah. So that's telling you the shape. See, like right here we got dominant ninth. Uh – yeah, I guess we have – they didn't have like a fret root. Usually they have that. Okay, this is what I was talking about exactly because it's got, you know, your major, your minor, your dominant seventh, your minor seventh. Uh, yeah, this is exactly what I just showed you right here. If you, if you look at it, you just see what I was talking about. Yeah, so we got major, minor, dominant, minor seven, minor, root five, minor seven. Well, then you could just five. you know see the six lines, you know the strings, and then oh. you piece it together. So how do you? So this is like all across three frets for the most part. Sometimes four, but yeah. So are you? Is this like? All right, if I'm holding it okay, this way, which, which this one is? is uh, like, uh, okay, the top whatever. the top left one that says major, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, this yeah. is that would be this right here. Okay. See how I have it. The one by itself should be the root, and then see it goes. All right. It root. skips. It skips a fret, and then you see two, two dotted up. Uh huh. See one skip fret dot dot, and then down a fret this guy, and then. Ba -ba. And then two more. See how it is? Like, can you piece it? Yeah. It it looks like um. All right, so I see that. Uh, I'm trying to think how. Yeah, like hold it. And is it lined up with my hand? Just line it up with my hand. Okay, so I see that. I see these two. Yeah, it's just I see the shape. that. Uh, now the two under the root. Are you hitting? Uh, I'm just barring them. See oh, okay. this finger? It's it's pushing down on all of them. That's what they call them. Bar oh, chords. so you're pushing on all of those strings. Yeah. Okay. These two these two aren't necessary. They're just octaves. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, this would be the same. This is just more full sound. Yeah. Uh.
So this is dominant. This is dominant right there. Is that uh dominant seven? Yeah. So this is dominant seven. So they they want that. So is this still a bar? Do you still yeah. have this a bar? Yeah, bar it's still chord? barred. All right. And then you have these other three. Yeah, and see the one right beside it to the right. That's a minor seventh. Oh, okay. Yeah, see, that's just this and just two fingers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's all it is. It's just shapes, man. I mean, if you know your shapes and you know where the notes are. I mean, <laughs> he said, you know your shapes and you know where the notes are. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's like, it's, uh, it's easy and hard, you know, like. Like, I can definitely... You get those calluses. I think that's the hardest part. Once you get those guys broken in, then it gets a little bit easier. Oh, all right. Once your hands... <laughs> Quite a bit easier, I think. <laughs> Once you're ready for war. Exactly. Yeah. That's how they sell it. All right, well... Were we going to jam? <laughs> I know, we were. And then, and then, it, then it broke off into... Uh, to teaching. To teaching. All right, I guess we're in G. What progression do you want now? Um, I don't know. <laughs> give me something. Uh, give me something uh, maroon five-ish.
so severe, so severe, so severe here. Said my daughter, call my girlfriend. Yeah. What did she call her? She didn't call her mommy. She called her Paul. <laughs> Where did she get the from? He's a good guy, yeah. Based on what merit do you declare that Paul is a good guy when he's never there? I ain't never seen him before. How can you say that if I don't even know he really exists? Well, does he really exist? His muscles and his core and his lats And his glutes like a brute Fill him up, fill him up, fill him up, fill him up, 
There it is. <laughs> you just need to hit the octave up button on there. Oh, uh, I was like, oh, where is it? All right, that is it. Uh, we will catch you later. Time. Seriously, that's where we end. <laughs> that's it. I'm out. Big farts. Pig farts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cops got to cops got to let it out, man. Uh, cops got to let it out. I do find it ironic that John works in dropping off and collecting quarter John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, that uh Is he the John that people always write to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's that John. He's the So, so he's the one with the newspaper articles, you know, the self-help things. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Dear John. Yeah, it's him and then there's what? Oh yeah, then He got he got sued by Abby, I think. Even John Doe. Oh. So yeah, yeah, John is definitely definitely popular. See? Cat That's is, a no-no cat. The cat is not playing. No. <laughs> he knows better. I tell him not to do it, and he still does it. Oh, man.